guys, Mr. Myas is here, and we're coming back from winter break, and we are chugging along here with Unit 7. We're almost done, guys, in Calc BC, so let's get started with improper integrals. Okay, so up here I have, uh, we have a different kind of integral called an improper integral, and an improper integral happens when one or both of the limits of integration is an infinite, infinity symbol or infinite. Or it happens when we have a vertical asymptote either on or between the two limits. So let's take a look at these examples here and see if we can identify if it's an improper integral and whether or not um, and why it would be an improper integral. So whew, kind of zoom in here. So um, the first one here is an improper integral because we have an infinite limit. All right. So we're just going to write infinite limit here. This, in fact, is an improper it says explain why each of these is improper. So we already know it's improper. We're just going to explain why real quick. All right. So this one, again, we have infinite limits. All right. So we're just going to write infinite limits here. All right. Let's look at another one here. All right. Well, this doesn't look like it's improper because there's no infinite limits. But notice this has a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And that's at one of the limits. So this is undefined, or I could say there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1, which is a limit. Okay, it's one of the limits of integration. So that also is an improper integral. And what about number 4 here? Well, notice here that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1, and negative 1 is in between 2 and negative 2. So this is undefined at x equals negative 1, which is in between 2 and negative 2, right? <clears throat> so if the if it's a vertical asymptote in between the limits, or if one of the limits is a vertical asymptote, or if one or both of the limits are infinite, then it's called an improper integral. So how do we deal with these improper integrals? Well, let's take a look graphically at what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about here is that let's say I have a graph of 1 over x squared. And 1 over x squared does this with a horizontal asymptote at, x equal, at y equals 0. So if I want to find the area under this curve all the way out to infinity, um, I can do that. That's a, in the area as it approaches. That would give me an improper integral. So how do I approach these improper integrals? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a limit. So I'm going to say the limit as b approaches infinity. And all I'm going to do is change that infinity symbol to a b. You can use any, um, any variable that you want, but b is the easiest for me to use. Um, x to the negative 2 dx. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve this integral and then take the limit. So I'm going to have um, just a, you know, power rule here evaluated from 1 to b. And then I'm going to have the limit as b approaches infinity of, let's see, I'm going to plug in the b. So I'm going to have negative 1 over b plus 1. And then uh, plug in infinity, that's negative 1 over infinity, which is going to go to 0. So this is going to go to 0, which is going to be 1. So my integral here and the area is going to be equal to 1. What? Area equal to 1? Yep, that's what's going to happen. Okay, this is going to, eventually the area is going to sum up to 1. All right, let's take a look at number 2 here. And we're going to do the same thing in this case, um, except we got 1 over x instead of 1 over x squared. So let me go ahead and do limit as b approaches infinity of 1 to b of um, 1 over x dx. Okay, so I'm going to do this part here. Limit as b approaches infinity. Uh, 1 over x is ln, absolute value of x, evaluated from 1 to b. And that's going to give me the limit as b approaches infinity of ln of b minus ln of 1. ln of 1 is 0. And ln of infinity uh, is infinity. So this actually, this does not exist, right? 
this goes on uh, infinity. So what we call this is we call this, we say this diverges. All right, so if something does not, if the limit does not actually exist, then this area is just going to go on forever and ever, and we're going to say that, that um, this integral diverges, all right? So we see diverges. We don't say does not exist. We say diverges. That's really important for you to, to, to remember that difference here. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. Limit as b approaches infinity, 0 to b of cosine x dx. All right, so we're going to get sine x evaluated from 0 to b. And then that's going to be sine of b minus sine of 0. And um, sine of infinity actually oscillates, right? So it actually won't approach anything. It's going to oscillate up and down, up and down, up and down. So this, again, this limit does not exist. But when a limit does not exist for an improper integral, what do we say? We say it diverges. All right, so we're going to say it diverges. Okay, now let's take a look at a couple more examples here. Um, these guys are a little bit more work. But basically, it's the same, um, you know, it's the same structure. It's the same thing we do. We're going we're gonna to change this. I'm just going to sit here and relax, guys. Let's kind of kick it with you. Well, why don't we just kick it together, huh? Limit as b approaches infinity, um, 1 to b x e to the negative x dx. Okay, well, x e to the negative x, that is a, um, that is a uh, integration by parts. So um, let me integrate this bad boy by parts. Change my pen here. Uh, let's say, let's see, u is going to be x, and dv is going to be e to the negative x. So that means du equals dx, and v is equal to negative e to the negative x. All right, so I'm going to get um, ultraviolet voodoo. Ultra violet voodoo okay remember all this has got to be evaluated from one to b don't want to forget my limit um so i'm going to get let's see this is going to turn out to be negative x over e to the x minus uh, let's see the antiderivative negative e to the negative x is just e to the negative x Evaluate it from 1 to B. So I'm going to get negative B over E to the B minus, oops, minus 1 over E to the B minus, uh, I'm going to have negative 1, so that's going to give me a plus 1 over E and um, plus. plus 1 over e, okay? That's when I put that in there. Limit as b approaches infinity. All right, so let's go and throw infinity in here. Um, this one right here is going to be infinity over infinity, but if I did L'Hopital's rule, that's going to end up being um, negative 1 over um, e to the b, which is just going to give me... Um, one, once I plug the infinity back in, it's just going to give me zero. So this is going to go to zero. And this is going to go to zero. So this whole thing right here is going to, this is going to go to zero. And then I've got two over E. So it looks like two over E is going to be my answer for this. All right. Okay. Let's get the next one here. Some of you coming off of a uh, winter break going, oh my God, man, <clears throat> I got to remember some of this stuff. Yeah, you do. You got to remember some of this stuff, guys. Okay. Well, notice here that uh, x equals zero is a vertical asymptote, right? So what we got to do is when we have a vertical asymptote that's in between our limits, we've got to separate this bad boy. So we got to go negative one to zero. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say x negative three dx plus zero to two x to the negative three dx. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna separate it. And then um, 
we know that in each of these parts there we've got a um, a uh, vertical asymptote. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these into limits. I'm going to say the limit as B approaches 0. And I'm coming from negative 1 to 0, so I'm going to approach it from the left of oops, of negative 1 to B, x to the negative 3 dx, plus the integral as, well, actually, let's, uh, we got to change it to a limit. Limit as, let's use a different letter here. A approaches 0 from the right. All right. Because we're again we're going zero is where the asymptote is, so we're going to approach zero from the left, approach zero from the right, because we're doing we're splitting this bad boy up. All right. Okay, so I'm going to do this integral, and I'm going to get um, negative. It's going to give me negative one half x to the negative two. And you know what? I'm just can I, if you don't mind, I'm going to write it like this. I know I'm chewing gum, but I've got chew gum sometimes, everybody. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to plug in my b and negative 1 here, and I'm going to get uh, negative 1 over 2b squared. 2b squared, not to be squared. 1 over 1 half. Limit as b approaches 0 from the right, from, from the left. Limit as a approaches 0 from the right, and that's going to be negative 1 over uh, 8 plus 1 over 2b squared. Okay, now I'm going to plug in. So, um, 0 from the left. 0 from, is 1 over 0. 1 over 0 is going to give me infinity. So this part right here does not exist. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. If that doesn't exist, this is probably not going to exist either. And it really it doesn't. So if these two things don't exist, and I add those two things that don't exist together, they still don't exist. So this is diverges. You're going to probably say, oh, man, I got to go through all that to see that diverges. Yes, you do. Sorry, guys. Okay. So there you go, guys. Improper integrals. Make sure you... Uh, change that limit and you or change the limit of integration and you find the limit as b approaches either uh, either that asymptote or if it ain't okay all right see you guys later bye